Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Ryan McKay and T. David. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T. Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top. We're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. NFL. Dallas Cowboys are 5 and 1 on the season after taking down the Green Bay Packers yesterday. Uh, desk, desk, Lord have mercy. I tried to put both his first and last yes. name together. Dak. Dak Prescott continues to roll, um, actually breaking the record set by Tom Brady for most passing attempts without an interception. On on a, a to start a career, uh, and then finally he threw his first interception, I believe, yesterday. He did. Yes. He got to one seventy seven, and then it was a bad interception too, because I don't know what happened. Like he threw, I don't know. It was a, it was ugly. It wasn't like a tip. It was just, I guess, a miscommunication between him and uh, the tight end. Right, but you know. Uh, you got him doing well. Ezekiel Elliott is running all over people, and I pulled up the stat. What was it? He has a uh, one fifty-seven or something. Yeah, his four straight game with at least one hundred and thirty yards rushing. Um, is it, it Tony Romo? Obviously, big news. He's getting ready to be fully healthy, ready back to return. Should. The door completely be closed on him taking over his starting job back? Yes. I agree. There's a lot of people that agree. Because they are rolling. Ain't no need breaking that up. And then having him get out there and mess up the chemistry. Because the rhythm going to be different with him and now. And he not as athletic as that. Yeah, he can run a little bit, but. The rhythm going to be different. Mm-hmm. And just leave Tom, uh, Tony on the side because all that's going to happen is he's going to get hit and break something else. Cause I'm convinced he's not going to ever be healthy a whole season again. So he's going to get hit and hurt his wrist, his collarbone, his something. So, anyway. Yeah, I just feel like the chemistry right now is, is going. I mean, I think they really have something rolling. Um, it wouldn't be beyond Jerry Jones to come in and screw that up. But, you know. That's that's for when that happens, we'll see and we'll discuss it. But yeah, there are a lot of people that I mean, I hadn't heard one person come to Tony Romo's defense other than Jerry Jones. And <laughs> I mean, then they they said Jerry backtracked after he made the statement that he was going to be the starter. He backtracked on that. Well, I so. think I think because somebody finally made him realize, you know, you do sound pretty dumb right now. We are rolling. Five and one. Yeah. Why would you take change the quarterback? Don't make no sense. Not at all. Uh, down in the Bayou yesterday, New Orleans Saints beat the Carolina Panthers forty-one to thirty-eight after a fifty-seven-yard field goal from Will Lutz in the waning seconds of the fourth quarter. Uh, Drew Brees broke the record for most four hundred-yard passing games in a career. Um. The defending NFC champion Panthers are now one and five on the year, and Cam Newton has walked out of yet another post game press conference. Um, is Carolina's season over? Uh, this is yeah, it's done. They done. So we talked about this before in the previous cast. Don't take going to championships for granted because yeah. you assume that you're gonna be good the next year. You never know what's going to happen the next season. And so, like LeBron, you know, they talk about how he's been the six. But those people that's playing with him and the other teams, don't take it for granted. Because while we think the Warriors going to make it this year, anything can happen. They could be hit with a bunch of injuries or something crazy. And then be like, oh, well, uh, maybe next year. So... 
Don't take it for granted. Number two, he got a Cam got to grow up. Because I got mad. I'm not a, a, a Saints fan or a Panther fan, but you score a touchdown, you get your two point conversion, you start hollering at the fan. I don't know what he was doing. Son, the game not over. How many times have we seen people say, don't leave minutes on the thing for, uh, or, or breeze them to go downfield? And what happened? They go downfield, then they kick a game winning field goal. Now you're sitting over there with, uh, I'm sad face emoji. Yeah, or was it real face? You know, it's part of it's part of what you what you signed up to do when you play, when you went to the NFL. You signed up for all everything, not just playing the games. You signed up for having to deal with losses, having to deal with the reporters. It's part of it. It might not honestly. I understand, I can understand not wanting to do it when you have to deal with a game like that, but it's part of it. You got to suck it up and go with it, son. You can't just walk off just because you get asked some questions you don't want to answer. So what did he do? I missed that. You, you, it's on, you can look it up and see. It. He, basically, he he, answer, he answers a couple questions with the same answer. Basically, you know, we got to get better. We got we to gotta find a way to win football games. And then, you know, a couple questions come in where he says, basically, his answer is, next question. Next question. Like, you don't want to answer those questions. And finally, they kind of, you know, you know how reporters will do. They'll ask the same question three different ways. And right. after the third time of him saying, next question, he just, and they start asking the question again. He just walks off. And he's got this look on his face like he had in the Super Bowl, like he's about to cry. And and just looking like, <laughs> you know, somebody stole his dog. But, uh, yeah. I'm surprised nobody asked him about him being on a scooter or uh, whatever while he was dealing with the concussion protocol. That's that's just him. He just needs to grow up. Like that's just another reason for somebody to ask you something that they really shouldn't have to say. Why are you on a scooter? Do we see anybody, whether you're on concussion protocol or not, you shouldn't be on a scooter, right? In the middle of the street, and you're an NFL player. I don't care if you're the quarterback, cornerback, whatever. How many times do we have to have these injuries, these freak accidents for somebody to be like, no, that's probably not a good idea to go on a boat. Now, I'm not saying don't have some fun and you just got to stop living. But what, we had the kid die on the boat. Wasn't it a boat accident or something? Mm -hmm. And you just, just don't take risks. That's unnecessary. Right, when you got all this money on the line, I mean, and you can they probably support their families, and I, I mean, yeah, chances are people don't have boat accidents, but you're not a regular person. <laughs> exactly. Um, are you? Do you have a chant in ranting for this week? Uh, yeah, part of my chant was ranting was stop acting a fool when the game ain't over yet. Yeah, like. You know, we don't see too many compacts. We Georgia them. Oh, we we the men. We did it. We don't score a Tennessee Hail Mary touchdown. Oh, what sad face. Oh Lord, not Ohio State was gonna look. No, not Ohio State. Clemson. Oh, we thought they was gonna lose. Oh, he missed the field goal. <laughs> yeah, that that hurt my oh. heart. I, I wanted NC State to win that game. I, I thought they. I thought they were really gonna do it the way they played. Don't worry, Clemson gonna lose. They not good as advertised. Uh. Again, the pressure of coming back. And that's what makes Alabama and Nick Saban them special. Mm -hmm. Because he found a way to keep that train rolling and keep them motivated and hungry. And Clemson, did they lose? Who did they lose? Lost a couple of defensive players that went high in the draft. But, that was but really should they it. be this? They're not really looking good at all. Mm-mm. Not at all. Offensively, they should be better. Did they leave it? They didn't lose off offensive people, did you? No, none, none significant that I, I, I recall, no. So, uh, come on, people. Y'all better than this. Yeah. Um, my chain is renting, and it's funny that you ended yours talking about some college football. This is the reason I didn't start the show with college football, because I knew if I started the show... I wouldn't be able to get a chance to rant without completely losing my mind. But uh, let's, let me talk about my Rebels for a second. Okay. I had, had, had to woo side for a second. 
How do you have two weeks to prepare for a game and come out and look so ridiculously unprepared? We looked. Oh, I mean, and you can say what you want about defense. Defense missed tackle after tackle. Defense been missing tackles. That's that's just something that they have not showed up all season. But yeah, we missed a bunch of tackles on defense. But the offense didn't even look good. I mean, we had receivers missing passes. There was some, you know, miscues on a bunch of different situations. Uh, they just they they didn't look prepared, and they had two weeks to prepare for this game. Arkansas coming off a game against Alabama. You know, which they got beat up in. I mean, not not really on the score wise, but like just physically. You know, Alabama took it to them. This was a perfect opportunity for for us to break this stigma of for whatever reason we cannot beat Arkansas. And just you know, we had the the miracle last year in the in the, in the overtimes where the boy ladders the laterals the ball and you know they go down and score or whatever and win the game. Uh, two years ago, you know, was a blowout. We just, for whatever reason, don't play well against Arkansas. And it was just very disappointing to see us look so un- unprepared for some, a situation where we had, like I said, I, I keep repeating this, but two weeks, two weeks to prepare. And that's the problem. So when you had those breaks and you probably was trying to implement some new stuff to try to, you know, have some new looks to throw at Arkansas since they had the footage on them and all. Just do what you do and let other people have to beat you at doing that. Yeah, yeah you should tweak some stuff, but not so much that they out of rhythm. And another thing about Carolina, they look awful. I don't know. At the end, they had moments where they threw good passes and stuff, but they just were never in. Nothing was smooth about the game. Um, and we all know that the Saints defense is not that great. Right. I don't think Arkansas's defense is that great. So just do what you do. And don't be trying to trick and all this other stuff. And and all these – when are we going to get a good running back? I don't know. As good as our <laughs> recruiting classes have been, we just cannot seem to get that – and I'm not saying that the ones we have are bad, but they're not what we need. We, we they're, need not a, they're not good. You need a bruiser. Yes, we need a bruiser. We need a back. bruiser. We need a Speaking d- of bruisers, oh. and I, I, I need to chant some more. I'm sorry. I'm just all over the place. Go ahead. Let me just say this. If somebody don't get, um, get, um, what's the, 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 the running back for Green Bay? If somebody don't get that boy into, uh, oh, uh, oh Eddie Lacey. Yes, if somebody don't get him into the what's the eating program that everybody lose weight on? Um, then what's they got? Um, you need to get it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Slim, slim, fat, new, new, neutral. What, what is it? Neutra? He, I, I don't know. Whatever that was that Charles Barkley did, he need to get in it because that boy looked like a, a running a fullback or a. I, I was like, why is he so big? Uh, and, and Did you see him yesterday? Yes, and they were talking about coming into the game, how he, you know, he was the only running back on the roster at the point because everybody else was injured. He um had the ankle issues coming into the game. And I don't think myself he got ankle issues because all that he weight. He carried too much weight on them baby ankles. Yeah. Them baby ankles just sad. They just sad. And there was so much talk about how he was looking so much leaner coming into the season because he was fat last year. And that was the whole problem, you know, with his with his game last year. It was lean win. I I didn't see it. They were talking about how he he had come in, you know, come in a lot lot leaner, a lot lot uh slimmer in the off season. I I didn't see it. He looked the exact same as he did last year to me. Uh, he looked big as a house. Yep. Weight watchers. Weight watchers. There you go. That's it. He gotta find them. Hey, bro, call Weight Watchers up right now. They they um endorse you. You drop a couple of lbs, make a little money, get in some good shape. That's what's wrong with your ankles. And next, your knees gonna start hurting because you're not that big. He might be five ten, ain't? He? <laughs> Maybe right. <laughs> he might be five ten. Your knees ain't really trying to feel, uh, carry no three hundred pounds. Uh, he a hamburger away from three hundred. I'm sorry. Okay, that was. That was, I think that might be my last friend. I don't know. <laughs> he is. He one hamburger away from tipping the scale. 
Uh-uh. I can't. So they call him Burger now. You know why they call him Burger? Because he'll well, have Burger away. away. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's it. I'm just saying. Oh, golly. Yeah, uh, we we definitely need to find us a bruise and running back at Ole Miss. I mean, that's really, honestly, what we're we are missing offensively. We have a slew of receivers, and when Chad Kelly graduates, this Shea Patterson that's redshirting this year, if everything that they say about him is true, he's gonna come right on in and be exactly what Chad Kelly has been, and maybe even better. Um. So, yeah, if we had, I mean, he's got all the weapons, so he's going to be fine receiver-wise. we had us a running back, we would be hard to deal with. So well, I mean, maybe this is, you know, every coach got like a little flaw in a recruiting or whatever. Mm. Maybe this is his. This is kryptonite because he ain't had no good running back. Since he's been here. Yeah, I mean, the one kid... They've been solid. The one kid that was supposed to be the starter this year was a new kid, new running back, and I cannot get his name for whatever reason. It just won't come to me. Uh, He is actually out this year because of academic reasons. So maybe he could have been the one that we needed. I don't know. But, yeah, something's something's missing there. He's going to have to do something. Uh, this ain't gonna get it. Let's roll into Empire, um, season three, episode four. What is the name of the episode, Brian? Come on. Oh, Cupid kills. Yes. Cupid, I killed him. I yeah, thought Cupid, Cupid was Cupid kills. I don't know who is Cupid in this situation. I thought Cupid was a love. Yeah, it, it, I thought he was too. He was a lover, not a fighter. I don't know what happened, but he, yeah. You know, I don't really understand who Cupid would be in this situation. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. But let's start off with Angelo and Cookie. Angelo, he's still trying to get you know get, get him a little nibble of that cookie. He, he's still after her. Um, invites her to a little uh, get-together. Winds up being a fundraiser with a, a attached to an opera-type situation. Um, he... Has a bunch of little snotty girls at the thing. Introduce he introduces Cookie to and, you know. Of course, Cookie don't take too well to that. He, she uh, you know, cause Cookie Cookie from the streets. So she, when the girls start basically talking about her behind her back, she gets at she she gets at them. You know, and only on the way Cookie can. Um, during the opera performance of La Bohème. At one point, the girl's singing on stage, and Cookie just stands up in the middle of the crowd and starts, you know, just yelling like folks will do, and just, <laughs> it just completely opposite of how you're supposed to act in that kind of situation. <laughs> um, but yeah, her, and, her and Angelo look like they're they're about to be something, but you know, just like every other situation, and I hope that Empire stays away from this because it seems like every other situation. Uh, eventually Lucius pulls Cookie back. But I feel like they got a perfect opportunity right now with him being married to Anika, as false as that as that marriage is. I feel like they got a perfect opportunity for her and Angelo to actually be something and if not be a little short time th- short short term thing. So uh, hopefully they'll keep that going. Um Shine and his uh sister Nessa you know, he's he's trying to get a contract for Nessa. Lucius and Andre go up to Shine's place thinking that they're fixing to, you know, sign Nessa. This is going to be an easy, quick, go in, sign the contract and be done. They realize once they walk in that they're in the middle of a bidding war as they have in a room sitting, um, sitting off to the side, a bunch of, you know, executives from other, from other music labels. They have a, a it's a bunch of fake real people, but they got a fake Rick Ross. They got a fake P. Diddy, a uh, fake Russell Simmons. They they got all these people in there portraying, you know, actual moguls from uh-huh. how we would know them. So, yeah, they're in there, and, and they realize they're in a bidding war, and they get pissed because Shine is basically, you know, playing them. So, they get pissed off. Um, by the end of the episode, they have then gone in. This they being Lucius and Andre have gone in and just beat the the dog snot out of out of Shine, 
I mean, you know, Andre has is, is come back to his gangster ways with his daddy. You know, they kind of have a little bond. Uh, yeah, they, they beat Chine down. They force him to sign the contract. And, uh -huh. yeah, and the episode ends with, uh, I'm going to get into some other stuff real, before I say, but I just want to end it with this. The episode ends with Shine pulling a little group together of gangsters, and they're going to, you know, they're going after Lucius and Andre. They, they're they going at they, you know, basically they didn't start the war. Uh, let me see. Uh, Okay, Jamal has been going to see Frida, like I discussed last week. Um, didn't didn't go well. He kind of ended it abruptly. Uh, so he's got that going on. Andre tells Lucius that he's been he's been going to see Frida, and Frida and he's going back to see her again. So Jamal goes to see her again, and this time Frida walks out, and she has been beat to death. She got a big old excuse. Know, I don't mean to be rude. Just give me that mic. Let me do what I do. Excuse. Oh, that was a throwback. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Frida comes out, and you can tell she just has been beat down. I mean, her eyes real swollen, and you know, just all kind of mess. So Jamal gets with Angelo, finds a way to get Frida out of there, basically declaring her mentally unstable. Uh, and you know, they cook up a, a false story about her having a history of mental illness in the family uh, so she is able to get bond you know so she can get on out of there get bailed out and just have you know a trial later on so she doesn't have to be sitting in there waiting on the trial you know fearing for her life lucius reveals to jamal that he orchestrated the jailhouse beatdown of frida knowing that he that jamal would go about doing what he did and you know, trying trying to get her out of there, and now that she has been declared mentally unstable, there's no way that if she ever comes back, tries to tell a story that uh she you know was going after Lucius, and you know, or Lucius did all this stuff to her. There's no way that anybody's gonna believe her now. So basically, Lucius played him, and he and Lucius tells Jamal that, that Frida was in on it. Now. Uh -huh. I believe the first part of it, I believe he's the one that had that, that jailhouse beat down orchestrated. I Probably. don't believe, I, and, but I think what's going to happen is Jamal's going to be shady towards Frida. Frida's going to you know, wonder what's, what's wrong. He's going to explain, well, you, you got Lucius, you know, you and Lucius working together. You know, how, you know how these kids are. I heard him and Jamal, you know, Jamal, Hakeem, and Andre you know, always had this, just, you know, get in their feelings and get all upset about Lucius when, he does the same stuff he's always done. Lucius ain't changed. So why are you, you know, getting all in your feelings and hurt and, you know, being like a little child about Lucius? He's the same person he's always been. Don't act surprised. So he's going to be in his feelings. Frida's going to wonder what's wrong. He's going to say, well, you and Lucius working together. And, blah, 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 blah. and Frida's going to tell him that she's not. She's going to make him believe that she's not because I don't believe that to be true. I don't believe that Frida is working with Lucius because why would she? So... Yeah, that's my, that's my prediction. I believe the first part is true. He did, you know, he, he did get those girls to beat Frida down. But, um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see. They're going to take a little hiatus, and Empire will be back after the World Series is over with. So we got a couple of weeks break oh, yeah. on Empire. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where they go. I think that the whole storyline with Shine, Building his army is just the easy way for them to get Exhibit off the show because you know ain't nobody dying but Exhibit. Right, <laughs> shine, right. shine finna die. So, yeah, that's how that's so, gonna go. Give us the four one one on what's going on on uh um uh, the Wayans. It ain't his show, but the Le remake. Uh, Lead the weapon. Is it good? I is love. It, okay. I love Lead the weapon. I, I ain't love caught it. it. Yes, I love it. I love it. Yes, I, I and so do every episode change? Do we have an overarching story while we have these little mini stories? Like, how are they functioning? All the obviously, all the police work uh, involved with each episode is a different story every time. There's one story that has you know is evolving over time, which is obviously Riggs. Um, Losing his wife the way he did, uh, through a car accident with you know she's right. preg pregnant with their baby, 
Uh, so he lost his wife and a child at the same time. He is constantly in therapy. Um, and you can tell that him and his therapist are kind of starting to feel each other. Each episode, they're building a little bit more on that. And it's a slow build, which makes it better for me. I, I like, okay. you know, you see it coming. You see the end game. But it's a slow thing, so it's not necessarily coming, coming, coming. Um, so, yeah, that's always a, a you know, a, a overlying thing. It's kind of evolving each week. And especially because Murtoff, which is Damon Wayne's character, would make a comment. Like this past episode, he made a comment about, you know, uh, what do you say? Something about, you know, you don't have a family and, 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 you know, things to worry about like I do, basically. And he said it in a different way, but you can tell it was, it was something that really hurt Reeves. Uh, he hurt, hurt him on the inside. Because, you know, he, he did. He did have someone, he, but he doesn't anymore, no. But, he yeah. was it, yeah. He understands. So, yeah. And I'm glad that, like, the first couple of episodes, they played off of Riggs, you know, basically just wanting to die. And I think they've kind of moved away from that for a touch. I mean, he's not as, like, suicidal, suicidal as, he, as he once uh, was. Cause, I mean, but he's they, still they wild A couple of episodes back, they literally started off the episode with him washing up on shore with a bunch of seaweed wrapped around him. They, oh. they they thought they had a dead body. They poked the body with a stick. The police poked the body with a stick. He wakes he up. <laughs> he, oh. he, he just walks out butt naked. <laughs> well, that's pretty consistent with, um you know, the show because, you know, he was on a suicide mission. Right. On the very first movie, rather. Well, he was just walked into where that person had somebody here a hostage and was shooting people. And he just walked in there and just started shooting or whatever. But, okay, I hadn't got a chance to watch that. Have you got a chance to to see the the girl pitch? Pitch, yes. I've, I've been watching that as well. There's a new episode just uh, coming up. I think they got a new episode this Thursday. I believe that's right. But, uh, yeah, it's it's... It's better than I, I thought it was going to be. I, I just assumed okay. it was going to be a playoff of the little girl that was in the Little League uh, World Series that was the pitcher. And I'm sure that was what the you know motivation was for it. I'm not going to lie to you. I was almost all the way through the first episode before I realized that that was Zach Morris playing catcher for her from Saved by the Bell. I did not realize Yo, I saw, that. No, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. That's what it was. I Because I, I hadn't done any research uh, going into it, so I just was like, okay, I'm just gonna roll into this and see what happens. Uh, yeah, I did not know that was Mark Paul Gosselier. I really didn't until most. It's all right, cause I'm saved by the baby. Right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Fox has got a lot of good episodes, a lot of good shows out there right now. I really okay. like the di- speaking of back to Luther Weapon. I really like the dynamic between Damon Wayans, uh, Murtaugh's character, and his wife. We didn't get to see a whole lot of his wife in the movies. You know, she would pop up every once in a while, and she never really had no big role. But Keisha Sharp, that plays his wife on the show, I mean, they have a really good, uh, good connection. Chemistry. Yes, a, a very good, a very good chemistry. Okay, and this is my last question. Okay. Uh, what about Kevin Can Wait? Because you're the one that told me about Kevin Can Wait. I don't know if you... Yeah, I've been watching it... Um... <sighs> I don't know what it needs. It needs something. And I don't know if the episodes being just 30 minutes long don't give them enough time to kind of build things. I mean, obviously it's a comedy, so, you know, you're going to have your funny moments. I think maybe, you know, maybe if they hit us with a, a guest star from one of his other shows, uh, you know, for an episode, I think that would maybe give it a little punch. It's a good show. I mean, it's funny. I laugh, you know, because cause Kevin James is just funny. So. I mean, I laugh and have a good time watching it. It's just there's something lacking. And like I said, I don't know if it's just a 30-minute thing that's struck, making them struggle. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I enjoy the show. I will say that. Well, thank you for filling us in on the shows. Um, for, since I don't get to watch much television these days, um, that was insightful. My my schedule is packed a lot this week, but I think I might be able to squeeze some time in here and there and throw a show on. I will say this. I have been watching uh, Power Man, as my friend Larry calls him. I call him Luke Cage. Uh, <laughs> yes. On I'm so, I can't Netflix. wait for you to get done with that, because as soon as you get done, we're going to talk about Luke Cage. 
and look, it's very, it's been very good. The first couple of episodes that I've watched, um, said that. Oh well, this is a spoiler alert because if you haven't watched it, okay, I ain't gonna say it because a lot of people might not have watched it. But I would say that some things that have occurred. I'm interested to see what's going on with this detective because I think she got some kind of special powers too. But I don't know. You know what? Have you seen it? Oh yeah, I've I, 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 I watched the whole series. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't. So does the lady have special powers? Just a yes or no? No. Okay, so how is it that she's standing there looking at the scene and seeing everything that's happening when she look at the little pictures on the wall when they uh? Okay, uh, I don't necessarily. Okay, I say no when you ask if she has special powers. I don't necessarily consider this a special power. I just feel like she's gifted. Uh, I guess you can call it a special power. She gifted in a way where she can look at a picture. And from a picture, in her mind, she can kind of, you know... Reenact the whole Kind of reenact. Not, not necessarily... Re and I think it's just coincidence that she can reenact it all. I think, like, maybe she can open it up and see, okay, this is possibly what went down. And okay. That's how I... Because there's been two instances that she's done that. And I was like, is she special? And she's going to continue it? to be able to do that throughout the thing. Throughout the whole oh. show, so yeah, which so, kind yeah, so of it really helps. It helps Luke episode. Cage. <laughs> Say it again. It, it it will it will turn out to help Luke Cage in the end. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay, so yes, I have enjoyed that. Um, I've enjoyed seeing uh, what's the? It ain't Sojourner Weaver. I'm making up a name. What is her name? The the lady that's working with the bad guy that want to do good stuff. <sighs> The bad, the bad guy that wants you know the hood, the 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 dude is like he not Captain Mouth, but he the main bad guy. And it's the lady that every time they at the club, he's sitting up there talking to her, and she want money for funding because she trying to do good stuff in the community. Oh, golly, what is her name? I thought she is perfect for that role. And as you she, as, as you go through the rest of the episode, you will see that she's even perfect. She she is very perfect for that role. I cannot Wolford uh Wood Woodard uh yeah yes what's God what's her first Jordan, name Alfred, Alfred 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 yes God, good Lord. we yeah. struggling yes but yes. yes Alfred 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 no. yeah Alfred Woodard Alfred Woodard I like her character <laughs> and uh. And I actually like, um, I can't, he is not, I don't think he's, uh, Diamondback, or is he? Diamondback. No, because I ain't seen Diamondback. I just put it up on DMD, Diamondback. That's, I called him Diamondback. Uh, Diamond, yeah, it's Diamondback. That's no, cool. Yeah. I keep talking about him. Yeah, you hadn't, you hadn't got to him yet, but yeah, yeah. Diamondback Cottonmouth. is coming. that's the one I'm talking about. I like this Mahershala Ali. Yeah, I, I know him from House of Cards. He had a recurring role on there, but he, he left the show after this, uh, or uh, allegedly left the show after this last season, so I don't know if he'll be back or not. But, oh, uh, I like him as the uh, a bad guy. He, yeah, he, he plays that part well. A good bad guy. <laughs> Man, when he tossed that boy off the roof, low. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now is, is, is Luke Cage. Um, Wait, if have you, you haven't to that part? watched it, check out the 13. Did you get to that part yet? When he threw the boy off the roof? Yes, because okay. he went and shot up the place. Yes, yeah. he just walked over there like he wasn't a big... He said, now go down there and get your money from him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. yeah. You just can take out whatever in his pockets because he ain't got no more money to give. Right. But, yeah, um, it, 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 it's very good. And when you get done with it all, we will give a, a, a full review. I will give an overall. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, put the if you got Netflix, I challenge you to watch the 13th. It's not the 13th. It's just 13th. It's a documentary. That's, about, my next, that's uh, one of my next things I'm opening up. 13th. It's thing. very good. Very insightful. Um. And it's things that I already knew. We already had talked about probably some of this when I was reading Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow. Right. But it gives you just some more insight on some things that's happening that I, I was like, what? Who knew that? 
Right. As far as the things that prisoners have to do when they're incarcerated. And mm. I was like, okay, well, might need to stop shopping at Walmart. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, you want to get into uh, since you, oh, prom- you yeah, promised okay, them. Okay, so I, I did mention Atlanta last week. That's a it's not a Fox show. I had I just threw it. Oh, in the middle of that, it's FX. Actually, it's the same family, same Fox, family. FX, whatever. Yeah. So, um, Atlanta is about a rapper and about a young smart guy that went to Yale. But sometimes, I, you know, I tell people all the time, school is not for everybody. And I say school as in college. So while you should probably have some other higher education, college might not be it for you. So he's he's bright, but he just dropped out of Yale or Princeton. It was one Ivy League school and decided to go uh, come back home. And he found out one of his cousins is, is about to blow up as a rapper. And he decided he want to manage him. And, and that's what the first episode is about. And then he's got a daughter. and. I don't know if they really like in a committed relationship, but he got a uh, he's still with the, the the daughter's mom and just showing the struggles of him trying to hustle in the streets with this guy and, and in the rap game and all the drama on the streets, trying to keep up their street cred and all kinds of foolishness, and then just trying to be a good dude to his uh, his daughter and all. So the first episode was okay. It wasn't something that I was like, oh, I'll never watch again. But it didn't get me like, oh, I need to see what the next episode is going to be. So right now, that's why I am with Atlanta. Uh, it got good reviews on uh, the tomato, whatever you call it. No, to- Rotten Tomato, yes. Rotten Tomato, yes. Yeah. It got good reviews on Rotten Tomato. So that's interesting because Rotten Tomato used to just kill, crash, and think everything is bad. But... We'll see. Okay. Well, good, good, good. Uh, well, I think that's going to put a bow on this episode. Um, as always, I'm one of your co-hosts, Brian McKay, and I am with... T, put some respect on my name, Davis. I kept waiting. I knew that I saw it. When I saw Birdman say that way back when, I said, that's going to be something T winds up putting on putting on her, on her signature right at the end. Yes. I knew. See, that's how well we know each other. I knew that you would eventually come around. <laughs> and this has been the Mac and T-Show Podcast. Thank you all for listening. This is the Mac and T-Show. This is the Mac and T-Show. We talk movies and TV shows, sports and world news, coasting like on a world cruise, hosted by Brian McKay and T. Davis, yeah, you can't tame us, we're going to the top, we're becoming famous, what time is it, it's time for the Mac and T-Show, what time is it, I said it's time for the Mac and T-Show.